In Job 34, Elihu is once again rebuking Job pretty harshly. But I like one of the things Job said in response to him in verse 3. The ear tests the words it hears, just as the mouth distinguishes between foods. So let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. And that's good advice for reading the entire book of Job, because in here, Elihu speaks a lot of truth about the greatness of God and the lowly state of man. And while he gets those things right, he doesn't represent God's patience and love toward Job in this chapter. He's trying to defend God's holiness, but God doesn't need defending. God will address Job in his timing. See, God is waiting. He's allowing Job to grieve and put words to his feelings and frustrations, feelings he didn't know he had. Job never even realized these questions were under the surface all along. It was the trials that uncovered these areas of doubt in Job's heart. But still, God remains patient in allowing Job the time and grace to work all this out in his heart. Yes, Elihu is saying the right words, but he's lacking some things in his approach. First, empathy toward Job's situation. Second, the patience to allow Job to work through his grief. And third, the understanding that God's love is long-suffering toward us. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul gives us a great reminder of the importance of speaking truth, but truth in love. If I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong and clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing.